comes to worship. Yes. Hallelujah. Oh. And we're not begging, begging tonight. No. We're going to give, give it, give it tonight. Yes. Hallelujah. Oh. Bless the name of Jesus. So we're going to sing praises yes. unto the King of Kings yes. and the Lord of Lords. Glory. There's a little song that Sister Joan was teaching us. Simple little song. I love it. Uh, and there's some. God, we worship you. Can you hear me today? Amen. 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 Father, we thank you so very much, Lord. And we come before you. We thank you for this opportunity, Lord. My God, that we can gather as one people and exalt your name. Thank you for who you are today. And we just worship you, Lord, like never before. God, move by your spirit in this place. God, you have caused our feet to come at this place in such a time as this, Lord. My God, where there is a purpose, there is a plan, God. My Lord, we thank you for what you are doing and about to do, Lord. Now we bring our attention to you, Lord. My God, we come against every distraction, every trouble of the day, and we bring our minds to this place. I pray, God, as tonight you prepare us to receive of you, Lord, that it would go into good soil. I pray, God, that the very power of your Holy Ghost would fall in this place like never before. God, cause us to decrease now as you increase, God. Be thou exalted. We call you are God. And in the name of Jesus, in the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in my sight. My God, my strength and my redeemer. And we all say, Amen. 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 You don't have to turn to your Bible, but I'm going to read the first three verses of Nehemiah chapter 6 tonight. And it says, Now it came to pass when Sambalat and Tobiah and Geshem, the Arabian, and the rest of our enemies heard that I had built the wall and that there was no breach left therein, though at the time we had not set up the doors upon the gates, that Sambalat and Gisham sent unto me, saying, Come, let us meet together in some one of the villages in the plain of Ono. But they thought to do me mischief. And I sent messengers unto them, saying, I am doing a great work, so that I cannot come down. Why should the work cease while I leave it and come down to you? Yet they sent unto me four times after this sort, and I answered them after the same manner. And the word of the Lord is blessed tonight. Amen? Amen. We thank God for the ministers and the pastor of this house. I honor you, Pastor Duffus and First Lady Duffus. I bless the Lord for you. All of the leaders, the pastors that are here tonight, I bring you greetings from my pastor, Pastor Oramiko from the Rima Christian Center. And we just bless the Lord together in unity. Amen? Amen. Amen. I bless God today for the honor to be able to be before you today another time. And God has truly been good to us. It's been about a year that we have been back here, but He has done so much for us. And there's so much that we have to be thankful for. Yeah. Myself, Minister Ruth, and I'm sure you have gone through so much, but God has been that good. Yeah. And the theme of this appointment that you have made with God tonight is pretty interesting to me when I was reading it. And it is, in a sense, a message all by itself. Yes. You can read Nehemiah, the whole book, and there's your sermon right there. So in saying that, I'm not here so much to preach a message to you tonight as I am by way of encouragement tonight to speak to you. The Lord has laid something on my heart to minister to you tonight, and I've called tonight Project Destiny. Come on now. Project Destiny. Yeah. And I want to speak to you tonight about the destiny that God has for your life and the project that is over your life tonight. Amen. And I know that God desires to do much and tomorrow I'm going to spend a little bit more time teaching because I find that a lot of times we want to get into a lot of the deep things of God which is so awesome but we seem to fail to apply the very foundations and the principles and we kind of skim over the things that are really going into the foundation of building who we are in Christ. Yes. 
I believe in a progressional God Amen. who is always moving at the speed of spirit. And I believe because he's moving so quickly that I, work, I walk in the word where it says only the sons of God are led by the spirit of God. Amen. So he's moving at the speed of spirit. And if we don't understand the times and the seasons of God, I guarantee you, you will be railroaded in this hour. Yeah. Yeah. You will always hear me say that because we need to be kept up and abreast of what God is doing in this hour. And that comes through much intercession. It comes through prayer. Yeah. And the last time I was here, we spoke a lot about position for power. Yeah. Uh -huh. And we spoke about how important it is because God's hand is not short. No. There's no lack in no. God's yeah. hand. There's no lack in his nature. So we're not waiting because God is getting ready to do something. God has been ready before the foundation of the earth. I think it's not a lack on his part that we then the onus and the responsibility, yes. which is the ability to respond yes. to the voice of God lays on us. Yes. So we now have to position ourselves in a place to receive the power of God. If you read Acts 1 verse 8, you see that, and the spirit of the Lord fell upon them and they received power. Yes. Yeah. To be witnesses unto yeah. to, to Judea, yeah. Samaria, and all the ends of the earth. Yeah. This is the power of God, but they had to be positioned when they were in one place and in one accord. But God is calling us for that positioning of power. Yeah. Yeah. I also spoke about with that power comes much responsibility. Yeah. And we spoke about the price of purpose. Yeah. And we recognize that although God has called you with great purpose, there's a great price. Yes. Nothing is for free. Nothing no, is for free. No, no, no. Salvation was not even no, for free. No, no, no. That was purchased. In fact, that was the most expensive yes. thing that was ever bought. Yes. It was bought with the very blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Yes. So salvation, we recognize, has been given as a free gift. But it costed God something. Yes. It costed His very Son. Yes. So we move and we recognize there is price in the purpose that God has for us. So the theme of I started a good work, it has such an undertone of crossroads. And I believe that God is calling us to reflection tonight. Yes, yes. When I hear I started a good work, it speaks to me about crossroads. And it's just for us to take a moment to, to out of everything for a second and to ensure that we're going in the right direction. Yes, I believe that as a church and as a people that we stand at a place where there's many forks in the road. And we're going down one place for a long time and there's a lot of valleys of decision. There's a lot of I interesting places that we can go from here as a body of Christ. But we stand as a cr at, a, at a crossroad. And my pastor always used to say, you know, if you take a course in school, it's accompanied by a particular goal in mind. Yeah. So I'm not going to take a set of cosmetology courses if I, in the end, I'm trying to become an engineer. Come on now. <laughs> it's not going to work. Yeah. Oh. Amen. Yeah. And I don't want to go through all those courses and those classes to find out that it led me down a different road come yeah. graduation yeah. day. Come on now. Yeah. Do you hear me tonight? Yeah. Yeah. The Lord says that the steps of a righteous man are ordered by him. So the course that I take, that's why in Jeremiah said the plans that I have for you, they're not to prosper you. You have to understand God is not a God about rules and regulations. And we can sometimes limit Christianity to a bunch of regulations that we just live out and apart from relationship. If you understand rules and regulations, they are for the immature. When I lay out rules and regulations, it's when I have a child and I know that they are not responsible enough to be able to follow the, 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 on their own to do the thing, so I would set a curfew because I know that they, they don't understand what time to come in, so I gotta say, you wanna come in at 10 o'clock. Yes. So when I set stuff up, it's because you're not yet at the place to, to, to go where you need to go on your own. That's why he said, I can't give to the immature the kingdom of God. Because when you are a child, you differ nothing. Though you be heir to the throne, you differ nothing from a servant or the tutors that are raising you because you're not yet in the position to rule in the place that you have been assigned to and that is rightfully yours. Oh. So God is calling the body of Christ to a place of a maturity that we need to wake up now. Wake up. And we need to get into focus and figure out what course we're on. Yeah. We need to recognize and go past the rules because yes, they're wonderful. That's why he said the law is great. That's wonderful. But I'm no longer, I didn't come to abolish the law, but I came to fulfill the law. Yeah. 
What does that all mean? What do you mean it comes to, uh, uh, to fulfill the law? Does that mean we still fought? He means that like if we went to a courtroom and you did a crime and the judge put down the gavel and said guilty and the penalty is death and a fine of $10,000. If you don't pay the $10,000, it will be death. If you have the money, your life would be spared. And somebody comes along, I come along now and I say, okay. And you say to the judge, I don't have $10,000. And I come along and say, I have $10,000. I will put this down on his life and I will allow him to get off. That's what it means by the law being fulfilled and it's not being abolished. The law wasn't changed. That debt still needed to be paid. $10,000 had to be put down. But somehow someone recognized that I couldn't pay that debt. That's what law was to come and reveal to us that we were in sin and that there was no power in of ourselves to come out of sin except by the Son of God. So when he stepped on the scene and he came along to the disciples, he just said, I didn't come to abolish not one letter of that word will fall to the ground. I've come to fulfill it. What you were unable to do in yourself, I am the God of your salvation. So now he stepped in and he said, the very debt you were to pay, I paid it all. My blood was shed. I will die. I will take your place for the wages of sin was death. Yes. So now we stand at a position where we have been redeemed, where we have been sanctified, we're no longer sinners, and we're now saved by grace. So we don't refer to ourselves as sinners, we refer to ourselves now with understanding that I'm a royal priesthood, I'm a child of the Most High God, I'm a peculiar person, and I walk in the righteousness of God, not that there's anything righteous in of myself, but it is the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We can say with John, apart from you, God, I can do nothing. Because you are the branch and I, I am, you are the vine and I am the branch. And unless I get connected to you, unless I am one with you, I can do nothing. So he's calling us to this place of retrospect and at each destination or destiny or course when you go to school has a set of electives that you can choose. So that's okay in life. There are some things God says, you make up your mind what you're wearing this morning. I'm not, you know, you can do that. Because you're at a mature place. You know, when you're not, I will tell you, that skirt is a little too short or this is a little too tight. When you're not, but when you get to the place, you know, I don't have to speak to you about those things. So there's some electives that you can choose. But then each destination, however, the majority of your course is made up of compulsory classes that you don't get a choice in selecting whether or not you go through if you desire to graduate. Yes, yes. You hear me. You go to university and you have to take almost 80% of the courses they say that you have to take. You don't want to take science, but you know in order if you're going to go through to engineering and biology, you got to sit down in a science, science class. So yeah. you don't have a choice after that if you want to graduate. That's it. Right. Amen. So there's some things God says, sure. But then there's some things, that's why he says some things are permissible, but not everything is beneficial. Uh -huh. There's some things that are not in the word of God, but he will direct your path. He will say what you can and cannot do. Come on now. Because he's a good father. Yes. So as believers, there are some things that you may be able to do that other believers will not be able to do. You are called to fit in everywhere. You are called. You are cut from a different mold. So when you are in school or in your workplace and things don't always seem right and I don't seem to get all the jokes and I, I don't seem to want to go where they want to go or I just want to go somewhere else today. I want to feel a prayer. I just want to move differently. It's because God has separated you. You sanctified. You called you holy and he called you peculiar for a reason. It's not in your course elective. It's not in your compulsory courses because you have a destination and a destiny that you have in mind. That's why Paul said, you know, he said we, we, we have to be careful because we think it's all good to be saved. But he said, I will beat my body into submission. I don't even beat the air as a man going aimlessly. And I don't run the race because I, like I don't have a direction in which I'm going. I run as if I'm going to get that prize. Yes. And he said, I beat my body and bring it into submission and subjection. Lest I preach the gospel to all and disqualify myself for the prize. 
So there's a truth there. That yes, we're wonderfully saved and we can be satisfied like that, but there's a race that's ahead of us. Amen. There's a price to get. Amen. And it would be a shame to preach millions in and at the end get to the door and he says, I'm sorry, what is your name? Oh, my God. Oh, God. He desires relationship yes. above everything else. Yes, yes. Aside from all churchianity and all the things, you know, it's wonderful. But we can learn how to do church and we know how to do all this stuff. But God is not looking for church goers. He's not looking for people who know how to go to church on the Sunday morning. Because going to church doesn't make you a believer. This is training camp. Yes. This is a place you get direction and instruction. Yes. This is a place where iron sharpens iron. You get the word, you go out, and you be able to apply, and you be able to execute the word and the justice. This is a place where you are built up, you get your armor, you put on the clothes, you get your uniform, the training. This is where you are strengthened. It's the hospital. It's a place you get healed. But after the healing... Yes. After the tools and yes. the weapons of your warfare have been handed on to you, there's a work to do. Yes. 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 When he said to Jeremiah, he said, go down to the house. Mm -hmm. And he said, go and see what the potter is doing. And he, he saw the potter with the wheel. And it, it, if you know anything about pottery, a good and a skilled potter will not continue a vessel if it is marred, but he will break it down while it's still in his hand and begin to rebuild it. This is the God that we serve. Yeah. They will not continue the work because they recognize if it's marred now, it's not going to make it through the fire. That's it. That's it. That's it. So he takes the time to say and break. It may look wonderful, but if there is one slight mark, he breaks it right back down and begins to mold and shape it again until there is no flaw in it. Oh, this is a place of decision. It's a place of crossroads. It's a place where God is shaping you and molding you because he recognizes before the foundation of the earth that there is a destiny and a plan that awaits you. This is the hour of restoration. It's a junction or a valley of decision where you decide which route you're on. You have to know what road you're going down. You have to know where you're going. Please don't walk around this Christian life without a clue of what you're doing. Have an idea of what God is doing. Please don't be satisfied with just mediocrity because you know what? The Spirit of God will not allow you to walk in mediocrity. It rages against it. Yes. Even the very nature rebels against sin. It rebels against things that are complacent because anything that's not growing is dying. So never feel safe when you're just sitting down. And, and I'm not talking about where you're in a season where God, that's not. That, that's a different season where the potter puts you up for a while until you can cool off from the fire and there's a time of separate. I'm talking about God and you knowing what God is calling you to do and pursuing that purpose, pursuing after the knowledge of and the revelation of those things. There's so much more that he has for his people. And firstly, in the hour of reconstruction, you must make up your mind that God is your head architect and that Christ is your chief cornerstone. Yes. You have to make up your mind right off the bat. Yes. Unless the Lord builds a house, you're going to labor in vain in that building. Yes. So you have to know that this is my God. This is the Lord, my Savior. He is the chief architect. And why do they say chief cornerstone? Whenever they break down a building, there's always one stone, one stone. that remains. And yes. it's the cornerstone. It's the yes. chief one. Yes. And it means that that one stone will be the template for the next building. And they will begin to build on that building a whole new building. But they always keep the one stone. Mm -hmm. That's when Christ said, I'm the chief cornerstone, yes. meaning I'm going to look at the building and everything will be tried by fire, yes. whether it be hay or yes. straw yes. or bricks, no matter what yes. it is, it's going to be tried. Yes. And if it does not reflect my image, yes. if this house was not I built know. by me, there's going to be a breaking down that has to take place until the only thing left is the very chief cornerstone oh, that when I get ready to rebuild oh. you, I will be the foundation of your life. 
That's why we always say people compliment you and God completes you because the danger there is because sin had come into our life, there's a separation that takes place and we then with that separation we want to fill it and we go about filling it with everything else but God. We try to build with the shambles and the pieces of our broken lives and we try to hold on with all we can, with all our might, with all the things and uh, we're sometimes making it by the skin of our teeth and, you know, holding on by a thread and God is saying, that's not my, I said I needed you to be a fortified city. I needed you to be built on the rock because the storm is coming. Storm is coming. Don't think because we're saved there's not going to be storm. He said storm is coming. The storm, don't, 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 just get over that from now God is saying, you know, but like, things are going to come. He said it rains on the just and the unjust. But the secret to that story and that parable is that one house was built on a rock and one house was built on the sand. God is in the, in the, the, the architect business, the business of reconstruction. And he's calling you tonight, Project Destiny. My God. He's telling you that you are his handiwork, his workmanship. Oh. And he has begun a good work. Yes. He's not going to stop finish until you are completed. Yes. 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 There is nothing you can do that can separate you from the love of God. You have to know that right off the bat. He is going to expose some things in you. You're going to see some things that you don't like. Do not be afraid that he does not want to have. If he was going to leave you for anything you have done, that would have happened a long time ago. Yeah, yes. My God, yes. So let me reassure you, beloved, he's not going anywhere. <laughs> he's not interested in what you do. No, no. He recognizes what you do is simply a fruit of what you were. Yes. Oh. Do you hear me? before but we don't sin because I'm a sinner I I'm a sinner because I didn't I'm not a sinner because I sin mm -hmm. I sin because I was a sinner did you hear so when I was in the world I, I did the things that I did because of my nature yes. those things didn't make me a sinner I was a sinner so I can only do what I was nature of. So we don't get shocked when people in the world go out and do some prayer. They can only do what their tree is. A good tree can only bear good fruit. A bad tree can only bear bad fruit. It's the principle of God. So that's why he doesn't come after the fruit. He said, all things are passed away. And behold, you are made new. Behold, you are a new creation. I'm going to ask you your nature. If I can transform you from the inside out. If I can totally uproot the old and put in the new. Then all the so when we say I, I've gone too far or I, I've done too many things in my life, God, I'm not interested in the too many things because I was after you all the time. If I can get you and if I can transform you. I know, and that's why he said, that's how you know that they are believers, beloved, by the love that they show. You can talk in a million times. You can throw your body in the chair. You can do all that Lord and do some cartwheels back and forth. You can do the church thing to the day you die. But he said, this is how I'm going to know by the love that you show. What is the fruit that you are bearing? Can you say, taste and see that the Lord is good? Oh, when they take a bite, is it something that brings sourness to their spirit? You ought to look like him and talk like him and taste like him. Why? Because you now have become part of his DNA. Yes. He said, I've now you receive power to become the sons of God. And when the Spirit of God comes yes. in you, it's no longer your blood, but the blood of your son, Jesus Christ, is running through you now. There's a new makeup of DNA. A new character is in you now. Amen. My God. My God. So we're at that place of decision and the hour of restoration is where the people of God and the women of God experience wholeness that the Lord desires for them. 
Amen. That's where the word holy means to be whole. It means lacking nothing. Amen. That's why the angels can cry holy, holy, holy. Is the Lamb. He is full. He's abundant. He lacks nothing. He's all powerful, yes. all knowing, omniscient. Yes. Yes. Everything that he's yes. oozing out of power is, is abundantly in him. He's holy. Hallelujah. And he said, you be holy oh, as I am holy. Yeah. Oh, there should be no lack. Yeah. There should be abundance. Yeah. There should be power. Yeah. It should be so in you that the very Hallelujah. the very pressure that comes against you, the very things of life that comes to push on you, the only thing that should ooze out of you is the very oil of God and the very yeah. oil of God. With great pressure comes a greater anointing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Oh. Yes. Never yes. run from the storm. Thank you. Yes. Only the eagle will fly into the eye of the storm. Every other bird goes away, but the eagle looks at the very eye of the storm and he goes straight for it. Yes. That's why he said, You will mount up. You that wait on God, you will mount up on wings of the eagle. They go through a process. They go through the bread. They break their beaks and they break their claws. And they go through a process where they are totally destroyed in the flesh. But when they come again, they are renewed in strength and their wings are even sometimes stronger. And when the wings and the waves flap, they go straight into the eye of the storm. From it. And when they get to that place, there's an altitude that they get to yeah, that they just ride on the wind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't get they don't get pushed over yeah, by the wind. They take the very yeah, thing that was coming against them yeah, and they position yeah, themselves and they ride the wind of the storm. Hallelujah! He's calling us to be holy. Yes, hallelujah. There's a story I love to tell, and if you hear, humor me for a moment, but it's something that's changed my life, and I continue to remember a very simple story. There's a, a, a man that was overweight, and he decided I need to make some eating habit changes, and I'm going to go to the gym and get to the trainer. So he goes to the trainer, and he starts to train for a couple of weeks, and he's going strong, and about six months go by, and the trainer comes to him and says, I quit. <laughs> And he said, why do you quit? He said, you have not gotten a meal. And then you went over to Pizza Hut, got a whole pizza for yourself. And you ate those. The next day, you did the same thing. And he said, I did saw you for about two weeks doing that. So he said, I quit. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what is that story telling us? That many times we want the very power of God and we want the blessings of the Lord by failing to apply the very principle that it's going to take to get it. He wanted a specific result, but he wasn't willing to do what it took to get there. And many of us believers, we want to get closer to God and we want to, you know, grow in the power of the Spirit, but when you're not willing to do what it takes to get there. My God, my Lord. This costs you something. Yes. Yes. Talk, I want to just encourage you. I don't want to. It costs you something. Yes. yes. Amen. He said, any man that come after you have to sit down and first count the cost. Can you afford this thing? Hallelujah. He said, if you trust me, yes. you'll make it. Yes. If you just trust me, you'll be able to say like Job, though he slay me, I will trust him and I will come out of pure gold. Yes. But if you trust me, I'll carry you through the wind and the way. But you have to trust me. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You have to know that there are things that may await you. There may be a pit, there may be a prison, there may be all forms of adversity, but if you can make it through all of that, know that I have a purpose for your life. All things work together. It's always good. Even when things are bad, it's still good. The good and the bad things, everything he uses to create character you and make you who you are today. So even when the things seem bad, he said, no matter what, I'm working it out for the good of them that love me and I call according to my purpose. It's all good. <laughs> so you can't lose with God on your side. It takes effort to lose when God is on your side. You have to work at that thing. 
Hallelujah. 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 We can't continue to keep doing things the same way and expecting different oh, results. What do they call that? Insanity. Yes. <laughs> Insanity. It's always one thing to maintain a blessing. I always say that. It's one thing to obtain it, but a whole other story to maintain it. You can be blessed out of your mind this whole weekend and then leave here and one thing could trigger you if you have some kind of deficiency or leak in your vessel. That's why God is after wholeness. He doesn't want any cracks or leaking because things, no matter what is contained in it, will always slowly leak out. So sometimes it just takes one person in the bottom line to cut us off for all that anointing to just look right out. We're interested in a little bit more. We're interested not only just to obtain, but we're interested in maintaining. Yes, glory to God. I started a good work. Somebody say, I started a good work. People in general, but as women, we have so many hats. And that if you're not careful, you will get swept up and you will lose yourself in the middle of it all. Some of you are mothers, you are wives, you're a boss, you're a pastor, you're a teacher, you're a daughter, you're somebody's auntie, you're somebody's godmother, and you're somebody's everything. And in the middle of it all, you're trying to walk with Christ, you're trying to read your Bible, because yeah. when are you going to get time to do that? Because by the time you wake up, the food is cooked, all of this stuff is done, you make it to work, you sit down, you go through the whole day, you take the bus, or you drive home in the traffic, all these things are happening, and you want to sit down, and you want to just pass out on the couch, and you have to try and make time for this yeah. thing, right? Yes. Yeah. So there's so many hats you wear. And if you're not aware of it, you're just going to keep going and get caught up in the middle of it and you're going to lose yourself in completely, completely. So we just keep going and you keep going, but you have to remain focused. Yes. Amen. I said I came to encourage you tonight. Yes. Amen. You have to remain balanced. Yes. yes. All right. And you have to remain full in this hour. Yes. Before you run yourself ragged and run out of gas going down a road, you had no idea how you got on in the first place. Oh! Hallelujah! Just going and going and going, not pulling and pulling and pulling, and you're not stopping for gas at any point. You can't be pregnant in this week because there's so many different things. There's so many. I can't come to Bible study. I can't really pick up my word. Maybe maybe on Thursday, or uh, maybe I'll pray tomorrow night. Uh, I just can't. You maybe go, 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 go. But I tell you, you can make it for about a moment, but you're gonna get about that far before you start running out of gas. Amen. God said. Stop. Yeah. Stop. Pull back. Yeah. Take a minute. Yeah. Get a reflection. Yeah. Sit down and review what's going on in your life. Yes. Yeah. Somebody say Project Destiny. Project, Project Destiny. Destiny. You have somewhere to go. Yeah. And you have to make sure that when you get there, you are not broken, lied on, cheated, talked about, mistreated, you scorned, and destroyed. You want to get there whole. We're not getting anywhere. We're not going into heaven by the skin of our teeth. And you always hear me say that I'm not dragging myself in heaven. No. That's not how God called me to make. No. You know what? I just make it in. You know, no. The devil no. Just, no. I don't talk no. like that. No. 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 I'm more than a conqueror. Yes. I'm more than an overcomer. Yes. And when the saints go marching in, you better believe I'll be able to say like Paul, I stayed my course. I have fought the good fight. Now I'm ready to see my Lord with my head up high. Yes. With the strength of God being my power, being my energy, being able to restore to my life. God has been teaching myself about the principle of maintenance and realizing that whatever it took to get me here is what it's going to take to keep me here and more. Do you understand that? Whatever you went through to get where you are today. It's going to take about that much and a little bit more if it's going to keep you and propel you into the next dimension. All that reading you did when you first started, all that fasting and that praying you did when you first started. You know you are so on fire. Nobody can talk to you sooner than talk to you. The only thing comes out of your praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory. I 
Yeah, we know that he's right, but we need to sit back and really seek the face of God and figure out, God, is this you in my life? What are you trying to teach me? Because in all of it, it has to work for my good. Yeah. So instead of soaking and being broken and having a temper tantrum and falling down, I'm going to stand like a kingdom child ready to rule and ask you, what is it that you're doing in my life? Ah, yeah. Amen. Amen. So they go into exile and Ezra now begins to rebuild the temple of God after the Lord raises up King Cyrus of Persia and says to release my people back into Jerusalem that they can build the temple. Yes. And then a time after that, Nehemiah goes back out and he says, I'm going to rebuild the wall to fortify around the temple. And anytime you begin to get serious about pursuing the original intent of God for your life, you better expect opposition. Yes. Anytime you get serious and you are going to go back to the original purpose that God had for your life. You're going to start to change over your finances, change over your eating habits, change over your, your, your relationship, change over the unforgiveness, change over all those things. You better expect opposition in your life. In Nehemiah's case, it was Sambalat and Tobiah. And many of us have different Sambalats, we have different Tobias in our lives. But despite the opposition, they continue to press and build because they knew God was with them. Amen. They just continued. And this is where discernment comes in because when God is building you, not everyone can be involved in that process. Do you hear me? When God is doing something great in your life, my God, my God. everybody, there's a saying we have in the West Indies, too many hands spoil the broth. Yes. Too many cooks spoil the broth. It means that when there's a lot of chefs happening and they have their own recipes and they think what they know is best for your life, somebody's throwing butter, somebody's throwing sugar, and all of them is a mess. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's why when he said to Peter, he said, who do they say I am? And he no said, you know, you're the Isaiah. Some say that you are or Elijah. He said, who do you say I am? Yes. And he said, well, you're the Christ, the son of the living God. He said, flesh and blood did not, it, flesh and blood did not reveal that to you, but it was my father in heaven. Amen. What does that teach us? That flesh and blood cannot reveal to you who you are. Yeah. It's like a painting. Anytime there's a painting, only the painter can tell you what was in his mind when yes. he put each stroke on there. Yeah. No matter what kind of expert artist you are, and you have a good a good niche for interpreting things, you cannot ever hit dead on what that 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 the, the author of that painting had in mind. It's the same thing God is saying. I created you. So whenever you are seeking to know who you are, you can only go one place but to the yes. original architect. I'm the one who dropped the plans for your life. I'm the one with the blueprint. I'm the one with the paintbrush. My God. Hallelujah. So when God is building you and shaping you, not everybody can be in the place unless they are walking in the spirit and ordained by God. Not everybody can be involved in that process My because God. not everybody has the understanding yes. or the intent for your life. My God. And if you're not pursuing that, I guarantee you the enemy will bring you a wonderful version of what he thinks you are. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 What he has done for years. Yes. Oh, you're no good. Ooh. You're not beautiful. Look at you and speaking and talking and a lot of us have embraced what he said that we are. But the Bible says that you ought to say what the Lord said. What does the word of God say about who I am? Yes. Amen. 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 That's why he said don't throw your pearls to swines or to dogs. And it's not to call the people in your life swine, but you have to recognize who can handle things from not handle things. Yeah. 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 There's a Greek mythology story about a snake, and one day this lady found the snake out in the front yard, and he was frozen, and she decided to take the snake back and be able to take it and nurse it back. So she brought it, and she tried to feed it, and she put it near the fireplace, and weeks on end, she's trying to thaw out the snake and be able to care for it, and when he started to move around, she put food in his mouth, and she did all these wonderful things, and one night, she let him in her bed. <laughs> And she said, come on, you can sleep in my bed, keep warm, that's fine, I'll put you under the sheet. About 12 midnight, the snake rose up and he bit her on her leg. And this was a venomous and a poisonous snake. Uh -huh. So in her moment of excruciating pain and in her last words, 
She said, why would you do this to me? I nursed you and I, I pulled you and I did all these things. And he looked at her and said, lady, I'm a snake. <laughs> Something amazing in you, but he wants to 
things that are hindering you to come up to the surface. And it was overwhelming to see what God had brought them from. But the enemy comes to expose, to shame, what God exposes to heal. Always remember that. Exposure is not for your shame. It's not for your damnation. But when God allows something to come out to the surface, when he allows the whole church to find out all your business, that is not for your shame, nor for your condemnation, but it's for your healing. Amen. Amen. This is his point of saying enough is enough and it's time for you to deal with you. It's time for you to allow me to be your good father and your good shepherd in your life. So it was overwhelming for them to see that God had brought them from. The gratitude was overwhelming for them. And I'm closing. When I went through, I just went through a whole you know, series of different changes in my life and I'm thankful to God. But I had a moment yesterday and I said, of gratitude. And I just have to say, Lord, look at what you have done. Mm. Look at what you have done. You've taken the foolishness of this world. Uh, this is just me. And if you really understood, he took the foolishness of this world to confound yes. the wise. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Things that people would have already written off. And when I look at where I'm coming from, the series of events that took place, how I got from one junction to the next, one road to another, how he opened one door and shut the other, how he brought certain people in my life, how he did certain things, and how he put me in this family, and what, to, and what he did. When I started to really look back over my life, I just was overwhelmed for a moment. And I had to sit down and say, look at what you have done. Yes, Lord. This is only the grace of your, yeah, uh, yeah, of your hand. But not just only grace, because you didn't just want to uh, merit me just grace. But this is the very power and the ordination of God. This is what you designed before the foundation of the earth, that I would live and not die, but declare the word of God. Amen. I say that to you tonight. This is God's hour for him to shine. Mm -hmm. Time is just a, a segment out of eternity. So when he put us in time, this is his time. And now he has chosen this season to display you in this segment of time. This is your season. Allow him to take the time to build you up. When they went through that process of fasting and praying confession, they began to offer up praise to him. And they recognize that they serve such a mighty God. This is your hour for God's reconstruction and his building in your life. You have started a good work. Don't let anything distract you at this time. Let nothing come to deter you off the course that you're on. God has a purpose and a plan. They're not to harm you. They're not to restrict you. But they're to form you in the very shape and the image of his son. And he did promise when you come forth, if you would just stay with me, he said, if you would just stay close by me, if you won't give up on me, because I never gave up on you. I know it got hard for me on that cross. I know they stretched my hand a little too wide, and I know it hurt every inch of the way. But I didn't come down because I knew that you had a purpose. I knew that you had to live and have life more abundantly. I knew that I could handle it, and you couldn't handle what I had to go through. Amen. And what you're going through now is nothing to, he said, they are nothing to be compared to the glory that awaits you. Yes. If you can just make it through yes. the temporal yes. circumstance. Because a lot of things, we, will, we don't remember half the things we went through 10 years ago. Half the problem that we couldn't even sleep at night for. We can't think about God and saying, if you can make it through, we may endure for a night. But joy, I promise you, joy is coming in the morning. The sun always comes out. If we can promise tonight that no matter what happens, we will always stay close to God. No matter how badly you think you have fallen, I need you to promise me tonight that you will not leave God. You will always come back to the cross. Lest you forget Gethsemane. Lest you forget his agony. Lest you forget his love for you. Take us back to Calvary. This is our prayer tonight. God, remind me what you have done. Remind me to stay at the foot of your cross. Remind me to remember that there is purpose. There is a calling over my life. You call me to occupy till you come. I don't want to have my bags back waiting to go to glory. I stand here to work as a worker. When you come back, you're going to find me working. Yes. You're going to find me doing what you oh, want me to do. Yes. So God, yes. use me, Lord. Yes. Move me, Lord. Yes. Shake me, Lord. Do it without understanding because it means you do 
to remold you. And he's going to break some things. He's going to step you through some things, but it's all for your good. This is the hour of Project Destiny, where God has called now for the building and the reconstruction of his people tonight. Ebenezer, bless you tonight. Walk in faith. Fight the good fight of faith. The battle is already won. The fight belongs to you now. Not against the enemy. He's defeated. But fight the good fight of faith. Put up that shield of faith. And walk by faith and not by sight. Be strong in the Lord. God bless you.